Can you do deep sky astrophotography when there's a full moon? This is a question many people have asked me recently, and in this video I would like to answer that question. So a few weeks ago I've captured this image of the night sky when there was a new moon, but tonight there will be a full moon, and tonight I would like to capture this exact region of the night sky once again, with the exact same telescope and with the exact same camera settings. Usually when there's a full moon I do not capture images of the night sky, because the night sky is simply too bright, and therefore capturing images of galaxies and nebulae will be very difficult when not using filters for astrophotography. So I've asked myself how much of a difference is there between doing astrophotography when there's a new moon compared to when there's a full moon. So in this video I would like to answer that question by comparing two different images of the exact same region in the night sky. One image was captured when there was a new moon and the other one was captured when there was a full moon. So join me for a new night of astrophotography for my backyard. But before introducing the setup I would like to use for tonight's astrophotography session, I would like to mention that this video is not sponsored and I'm not being paid for it, and all products shown in this video were purchased by myself. But now I would like to start. So doing astrophotography when there's a full moon without using filters can be very difficult. So I made that mistake when starting into the hobby of astrophotography. So I planned to capture a galaxy when there was a full moon, and in the end the image was not that good. Since then I always plan to capture my images of galaxies or nebulae when there's a new moon because then the conditions are better. But tonight I would like to do deep sky astrophotography when there's a full moon. But first of all I would like to introduce the setup that we'll be using for tonight's astrophotography session. So the mount I would like to use for tonight is the HDQ5 Pro GoTo mount. On the top of this mount I've mounted my telescope, so I would like to use the Oscar SQA55. This telescope has a focal length of 264 millimeters, which is perfect for wide field astrophotography. At the back of this telescope I've attached my camera, I would like to use the Canon EOS 60A, which is a full frame camera. So, this camera is astro modified, which is very helpful for deep sky astrophotography. Furthermore, I've attached a guiding system to this telescope, so I would like to use the CWO ASI 120mm mini mono guiding cam in combination with a 60mm guide scope. Furthermore, I would like to use the CWO ASI Air Pro for controlling the entire deep sky astrophotography setup. So, this is actually the entire deep sky astrophotography setup that I plan to use for tonight. So a few weeks ago when I captured the exact same region with this camera, I used a single exposure time of 3 minutes and an ISO value of 1600. So this is everything I would like to mention so far, so now we have to wait until it's dark enough, and then I plan to align the telescope towards this object, and then I plan to capture images all night long, so I plan to achieve a total exposure time of around 4 hours, and then tomorrow I plan to stack these images in order to combine them in order to create one image, with a total exposure time of hopefully 4 hours, and then I would like to compare these different images. So tomorrow I would like to compare the images I've captured a few weeks ago when there was a new moon with the images I will capture tonight, and I'm really interested in how much of a difference there is. So see you tomorrow. So this is the final image with the images I've captured yesterday. So this image was captured when there was a full moon. So right now I do have two different stacks, so two different final images. So I do have this image, which is the image I've captured yesterday when there was a full moon, and I do have the other image, which is the image I've captured a few weeks ago when there was a new moon. So yesterday I was able to capture 4 hours of total exposure time, so each image has uh, a single exposure time of 3 minutes, so therefore I've stacked uh, and combined 80 images, so that results in total exposure time of 4 hours. So this is the image I've captured yesterday, which has a total exposure time of 4 hours. So the other image has the exact same total exposure time as well. So a few weeks ago I've captured this region when there was a new moon and I have captured 30 hours of total exposure time. And for this test it was important for me to have the exact same exposure time for both images. Therefore I've created another stack for the images I've captured a few weeks ago with 8 images as well, which results in total exposure time of 4 hours too. So now both images do have 4 hours of total exposure time, so I have combined 80 images for each single image. So now I would like to share both images with you. So first of all I would like to show you the different images, so the different stacks, so the final images I've captured, so one that was captured when there was a full moon, and the other one that was captured when there was a new moon. And later on I would like to compare both images side by side in order to compare the details that are visible in both images. But now I would like to start by taking a closer look at the image I've captured yesterday. So as I have mentioned, this image has a total exposure time of 4 hours, and in this image you can see the two galaxies right there. So there are definitely more galaxies in that, uh, in that image, 
So there, there's another galaxy, for example, and here as well. But these are the two main galaxies I've planned to capture. So as you can see, there are a few structures visible in that object. So definitely four hours of total exposure time is enough for capturing those galaxies. So for sure, collecting more exposure time helps you to improve your image even further. But in my case, it was important for me to make those structures in that region visible. And therefore it was important for me to capture a very long exposure time, so more than 30 hours of total exposure time. But this is just a test to look how much of a difference there is between doing astrophotography when there is a full moon compared to when there is a new moon. So this is the image I've captured when there was a full moon, so the images I've captured yesterday. Now I would like to share the other image with you, so the image I've captured a few weeks ago. So this is the image I've captured a few weeks ago, so these are the images I've captured a few weeks ago. So this is a final image again, so it is uh, once again a stack that has a total exposure time of 4 hours. So I've stacked 8 images in order to create this picture. So once again when zooming in you can see both galaxies and you can already see that way more structures are visible. So for example, these structures right there, they are not visible when uh, when looking at the other image that was captured when there was a full moon, that's definitely for sure. As I have mentioned, the plan was to make structures visible in that region, so in general, in the background. In this case, you can clearly see that there are a few nebulae. So unfortunately, a few weeks ago, I had a few problems with the stars in that corner. So you can see that these stars are not that round, but still it's definitely okay because um, in total, these stars do look relatively good. So in this case, you can definitely see that more structures are visible in that Im image, but still both images do have the exact same exposure time. The only thing that has changed are the conditions. So both images were captured with the exact same camera settings. So I've used an ISO value of 1600 at a single exposure time of 3 minutes. So the camera settings are the exact same and the telescope and camera, everything is the exact same. The only thing that has changed are the conditions. So the one image was captured when there was a full moon and the other one was captured when there was a new moon. So this is the only thing that has changed. But now I would like to compare both images side by side. So here we go. So now you can see both images side by side. So now you can definitely see a difference between both images. So once again, this image was captured when there was a full moon and this image was captured when there was a new moon. So now I would like to zoom in a bit in order to compare different structures in both images. So first of all, I would like to take a closer look at the two main galaxies in these images. So when zooming in, you can see that there is a big difference between both images. So you can definitely see that in this case, less structures are visible. So for example, when zooming in on this galaxy, you can definitely see that more structures are visible in this case. So you can definitely see that the color of the image has changed a bit. And especially when zooming in on this galaxy, you can see a very big difference between both images. So when zooming in, you can see that in this image, so right here you can see that there are a few structures around that galaxy. And in this case, unfortunately, you can't see these structures. And in general, definitely more structures are visible in that object right there. So for example, when looking at this region right there, you can see that in this case, there is way more noise. And in this image, there are already a few structures visible. So in this image, the galaxy looks way better compared to in this image. Furthermore, I would like to take a closer look at this galaxy right there. So uh, this galaxy, so you can definitely see that there is a lot of noise and there are only a few structures visible. And when zooming in, in this image, you can see that way more structures are visible. So you can definitely see that in this image, the object is a bit brighter. So it's very important to mention that I have processed both images the exact same way. You can definitely see that way more structures are visible in this object right there. And furthermore, I mean, the plan when doing this project was to make structures visible in the background. That was the plan. And in this image, you can see that I was able to reveal a few structures in the background. So you can see a nebula right there. So in the final image with a total exposure time of uh, more than 30 hours, definitely you can see more structures. But in this image, you can already see a few structures in the background. And when zooming in on this image, you can see that unfortunately, I was not able to reveal those structures in this image. I mean, you can see that there is a difference when it comes to the brightness. Uh, only a little bit, but in this case you can already see a few structures of these 
uh, object here in the background. So when comparing both images, you can definitely say that the conditions are very important when doing deep sky astrophotography, especially without filters. So in this case, I have not used any filters and as you can see, it's very important to do deep sky astrophotography when there is a new moon, especially when not using filters for astrophotography. And that is a mistake I made in the beginning when starting into the hobby of astrophotography. So I plan to capture galaxies when there was a full moon. So you can definitely see that it's not the best idea to capture those galaxies when there is a full moon, especially when not using filters for deep sky astrophotography. So, I mean, in the beginning, I already knew that there will be a difference between both images, but I'm definitely surprised by how much of a difference there is. So this is actually everything I've planned to mention so far about these images. So if you have any further questions about the images I've captured, definitely feel free to ask me down below in the comments and I will definitely help you. If this video was interesting and helpful to you, I would really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching and until next time, clear skies, Felix.